emphysema is part of COPD, which means chronic obstructive pulmonary disease. The most frequent cause of COPD is cigarette smoking. And what happens is that over time, the cigarette smoking causes irritation and inflammation of the small airway until it can also cause lung destruction, destruction of the lung architecture. That is called emphysema. Patients with emphysema are usually treated with different type of inhalers, oxygen supplementation, and pulmonary rehabilitation. I am Dr. Sebastian Fernandez Lucy. I'm the Director of Interventional Pulmonology here at Mayo Clinic, Florida. Hi, I am Dr. David Abia Trujillo, and I am one of the pulmonary doctors uh, here in Mayo Clinic, Florida. Our manuscript title, Bronchoscopic Lung Volume Reduction, a new hope for patients with advanced emphysema and air trapping will be published at Mayo Clinic proceedings very soon. When a patient with advanced emphysema is already being treated with all this medical approach, then we have new hope for those patients that usually have very poor quality of life due to their shortness of breath. There's a concept of lung volume reduction that has already helped these patients. And there is a new minimally invasive approach to these patients. Dr. Rabia, can you please explain this, the concept of lung volume reduction? The concept of lung volume reduction, sometimes it's difficult to understand. A lot of our patients ask us, well, how is it possible that if I am already struggling with my breathing, you wanna reduce my lung volume. And the best way we can explain this is by going back to the respiratory physiology. How do we breathe? Breathing in, breathing in is an active effort. We use the muscles and mainly the diaphragm. The diaphragm is a very strong muscle that even if you have a narrowing in COPD, a narrowing of the airway, you're still gonna be able to put all the air in. Breathing out, on the other hand, is a little bit more challenging because it is a passive process. There is no muscle contraction involved and it's only up to the elasticity of the lung to exhale the air from the lungs. In the same way when you inflate the balloon, the air goes out on its own. It's a similar process in the lungs. The challenge becomes when a patient is breathing in and they're trying to breathe out. Lungs that have emphysema, they have lower elasticity. They're not able to recoil. And then since the ability to exhale is not enough, the air gets trapped in the lung regions that have the most amount of emphysema. So back in 2003, there was a trial called the NET trial. And that trial showed that by reducing the volume of those areas that are most affected by the emphysema, the lungs are going to decrease their hyperinflation and they're going to have better movement. The parts, the healthier parts that are compressed are going to expand and the diaphragm that is kind of squished down, it's going to move better and it's the patient is going to be able to breathe better. Lung volume reduction has already shown to help our patients. The NET trial showed that by reducing lung volume in patients, patients have a better quality of life. Patients can exercise for more time. And in some patients, a very specific subgroup analysis, they even have a better survival. So we know that lung volume reduction does help patients, a certain group of patients with advanced disease. Now, that is a surgical approach. Nowadays, we have a new hope, which is a minimally invasive approach, which is, which is called bronchoscopic lung volume reduction. During this procedure, the patient is under general anesthesia, and the proceduralist will go down with a flexible scope, a flexible tube, tiny tube through the mouth into the airway of the patient, and will go into the predetermined target area, target lobe. 
that target love is the love that has the most emphysema, that is most damaged because of the emphysema. In that love, we will place these tiny one-way valves, which are like check valves. These valves will not allow air to get into that part of the lung while the patient breathes in, but it will allow the air to get out of that part of the lung when the patient breathes out. So with time, that part of the lung will shrink, will deflate, allowing more space for the healthier part of the lung to expand and the patient will feel the clinical benefit. So what should we expect right after the procedure? After bronchoscopic lung volume reductions, the patients usually get admitted to our hospital about three to four days. And this is with the goal of maximizing patient safety. A lot of patients experience the benefit right away and their symptoms improve right away. However, the majority of the patients have a slow progress and this, their breathing gets better as time goes. As, as we spoke before, it's a passive deflation of those areas of the lung that are most diseased. Uh, this benefit gets really potentiated when patient continues doing pulmonary rehab after the bronchoscopic lung volume reduction. We also uh, would like you to know that not all patients with advanced emphysema are candidate for this procedure. So not all patients will benefit from these endobronchial valves. So there's a subgroup of patients with advanced emphysema that needs to meet certain requirements to benefit from these valves. Here at Mayo Clinic, we have a multidisciplinary approach for patients with advanced emphysema, and that's one of our advantage. We get together in a group of different specialists, uh, pulmonologists, interventional pulmonologists, thoracic surgeons, thoracic radiologists, lung transplant doctors, and evaluate each person individually and decide what would be the very next step, the best treatment approach to that specific patient with emphysema. So we can offer a wide variety of treatment for advanced emphysema, including bronchoscopic lung volume reduction, surgical lung volume reduction, and of course, lung transplantation. Because here at Mayo Clinic, the needs of the patient come first. We hope you found this presentation from the content of our website valuable. Our journal's mission is to promote the best interests of patients by advancing the knowledge and professionalism of the physician community. If you are interested in more information about us, our homepage is www.mayoclinicproceedings.org. There you'll find access to information for our social media content such as additional videos on our YouTube channel or journal updates on Facebook. You can also follow us on Twitter. More information about Healthcare at Mayo Clinic is available at www.mayoclinic.org. This video content is copyrighted by Mayo Foundation for Medical Education and Research.